Hello and welcome everybody to Ticker Talk for Wednesday, March 22nd. Uh, we got lots to talk about tonight. Um, if you haven't watched the midweek video, uh, you might want to go back and watch that to get an idea where we're at. But we'll uh, we'll just go a little deeper into maybe some of the Fed stuff. Uh, but first, everything we do here is for educational purposes only. We are not investment advisors, do not provide investment advice. All investment decisions are your own and done at your own risk. I think everybody here knows who I am, and I think that you guys know what to do. Um, if you are uh, watching live, uh, feel free to unmute your mic and join the conversation, or if you have any questions or anything, you can just type those in the chat. Uh, if you're watching the recording, go ahead, smash that like button. That would be really awesome. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into this and take a look at the markets. I'll bring up a chart of the S&P 500 right here. Uh, that's Apple. Let's go to SPY. Here we go. All right, so you can see that um, it's a little messy in here at the hard right edge. Here we go. We'll just zoom in a little bit. You can see we've got a big red candle today. And, uh, you know, um, it failed right at, um, right at some resistance and everything. Uh, but it's just the, the size, the depth of the pullback there after breaking out to the upside, pulling right back and then closing on the low. And if we look, <clears throat> we look at an interjay chart, um, you know, there's this and pretty much every stock, uh, almost every stock and, and sector ETF looks like this today. Where you have the um, at two o'clock, you have the the rate announcement. We went up a quarter point, and the uh, the dot plot was released along with the um, rate statement. And they said they'll probably, or they're predicting, they're going to be raising another quarter point this year. And then uh, looking at seventy five basis points worth of cuts for next year. And so market went up on that, pulled back a little bit. It was a little choppy. And then uh, is it this candle here? So that's 1430. Here we go. This candle here, this sort of doji-like candle with, candle with big long wicks. That is, uh, oh, that's 235. Here we go, right? This one here, the one before that is where Powell started speaking. And you can see that some more, you know, as the volatility had been dim diminishing once he started speaking, uh, then we get a lot more volatile. The eye, you know, the funny thing is with this, he's reading a prepared statement that you can actually go and read at two o'clock <laughs> if you just go to the FOMC's website. So it kind of blows me away um, every time when we have this sort of volatility off of something that is already out there in the market that you can just go read. And that's why I think that, you know, oftentimes we'll get these big wicks and everything, but we come right back to the middle because that information is already in. But once we get into, um, you know, about 10 minutes into it, that's when we start getting the uh, questions from the press. That's when we get the real volatility in here. And I remember the first questions were kind of softball and um, I don't remember exactly what they were, but things, you know, you, you, you answered fairly positively. And then up here, um, he said something about, we'll raise rates as much as we need to to get inflation under control. Because they said, oh, you said, you know, another 25 basis points this year. And then he's like, oh, we're going to be data, data, data dependent and we'll raise my rates as much as we need to. And that's when this happened. And then, you know, he answered something and it was a little more positive. Then here he got asked about um, the banking crisis. And instead of saying, you know, we've got everything under control, we've got all the liquidity we need and everything, started talking about all the things that could go wrong. And then it plunged again. And it, and it just continued to plunge all the way into the close. Um, so uh, that's sort of Powell's thing in a, uh, in a nutshell. Um, you know, so now the market is concerned again. And I'm sure and uncertain. Um, whereas we really had an opportunity to come out the other side of this being certain about, you know, uh, at least the, the near future, being sure that, that they do have things under control. Um, and that, you know, this crisis will resolve itself favorably. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that was great, Kevin, a good correlation. Um, yeah, I like how you kind of timed it from, you know, what you're saying uh, to, 
banks, it's good to learn, you know, how markets move like this. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting to, um, you know, be able to watch it real time and, and, um, you know, have one eye on the market, one eye on his press conference and what he's saying and, and how the market reacts to it. Uh, and it's, that is surprising sometimes. So I think that's, um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this. I, I think that, um, you know, I guess people are going to want to know what about tomorrow, right? What happens tomorrow? And I think it's a really tough call. I think there is an opportunity to save this. Uh, I, I think that we're going to see some sort of flush in the morning. I, I think that this will have scared people. There's going to be people who want to get out of their positions, and they're going to do it first thing in the morning. So I think the first hour looks pretty ugly. But I'm going to be watching closely for capitulation. Or, you know, I, I mean, this here, these, these last few candles here at the end of the day, that looks like capitulation. Where you you know these cows get bigger and bigger and the volume just gets huge, right? Um, you know, so I'm going to be looking for that sort of thing, and then followed by green bars that can actually follow through to the upside. Uh, that would be a clue that maybe this plunge that we had today is not as serious as it looks. But if you've been watching that midweek video and you looked at, I mean, every single sector we looked at had this giant red candle on the day. It, it, it started off great and it went up and then it just completely fell apart. And those are not healthy looking candles. And any technician looking at that will tell you that, that there's probably more downside coming, unfortunately. So I, I think that's where we are for the overall market. Just very... Um, Probably down, you know, with a chance of up, a uh, chance to save it, uh, but also very dynamic and indecisive at the moment, I think. Um, you know, one, uh, you know, a, a one hour period does not really kind of make the next week, you know, um, the next week worth of, uh, of moves in the market. So we've got to be careful about reading too much into it, but we also need to be really cautious. think that's all I have to say about that. So if you guys have any uh, tickers you want to look at, I think you know what to do. Just let me know what you want to look at. Tell me a story or whatever. <laughs> uh, stories might be uh, might be better suited. <laughs> Because I, I think um, I actually wound up going to go look at a couple of tickers I was kind of marking through charts this past weekend. But, I mean, the same story, I think, trickling down for the most part. But I will say, um, I, I, <laughs> he pulled it right on up. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I remember looking at it. I remember this one. I don't remember what the other one was. Yeah, yeah it was definitely, uh, I can't remember the other one. I'll go back and look. But definitely this one caught my eye. Only because I was like, at first glance, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, I see that it's looking like it is in this kind of like downward channel for the moment. But then I zoomed back and, you know, totally had a different picture because I think Friday it seemingly bounced off of a much larger trend line to possibly keep the this bullish upward trend it has going for itself. Right. It's pretty long. Um <laughs> And so I was like, man, I wish I would have, you know, like this is that's that's a that's a big move. So I'm and I will always I was like, I'm gonna ask Kevin on Wednesday. So like <laughs> when when it comes to things like this, because from in this case, right, I don't know if today hurt this or 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 what or you know, like in terms of maybe pushing it to finally roll over, or will it really bounce off? and stay like that to try to go back and attack those highs. So, um, so well, yeah. I heard it, you know, um, cause one of the thing, one of the things I, I mentioned in the video, uh, was how a lot of charts got broken today by that candle. Yeah. Um, you know, because look at, I mean, this is a bearish engulfing candle. You can see the, the body of this candle or it's, you know, almost almost the, the the body of this candle is almost 
engulfing the entire previous day's candle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very bearish. And look at, I mean, we closed right on the low. Everything just closed right on the low. Yeah. Very bearish candle where you had been, um, you know, you'd had five nice up days. Now, granted, you just had five up days. So we should expect at some point to have a little bit of pullback. Um, but it it sort of brings into play a potential downtrend here, right? You know, so was okay. this was your trend, or this is definitely one of the trend, right? And if you can move the trend line up to there, um, you know, now if you keep moving the trend line up, uh, you know, is it going to come back up to it? So you probably don't really move the trend line. I mean, I would leave the trend line there for now because I think that what we're seeing here is a failure at the trend line. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, another unfortunate thing here, um, you know, because I mean, we all kind of like symmetry and everything. And, and look at, I mean, that, you know, yeah, yeah that yeah. matches this. This now makes a pretty decent little channel, right? Right, right. Um, it's not perfect in there, but, you know, there is a bit of a channel here. So um, the upside on this is there's still like areas of support here. Um, you know, you didn't. I didn't see you draw any horizontal lines on your chart. No, 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 I didn't because I think I was just blown away by how long this. <laughs> right, I was right. Blown away how long that this like up upward move has been, and yeah. so I, I don't think. Um, and I don't. And in terms of it seemingly still going, so I was like, you know, I was just kind of blown away. So at this point, I was like, this is. Uh, I wonder what you know how. <laughs> Like, you know, in terms of how being able to read this in terms. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, there are, I mean, there aren't a lot of areas where, where horizontal support is, is really nicely behaved on this chart, actually. Um, yeah. it, it seems that the past doesn't really move into the future all that often. There are areas like here's another, here's another line where you can see there's been a lot of interaction with right. this price what is this you know this is a bit of a random price what 143.50 mm -hmm. um and then this one up here at 153 right um so but but more importantly like you you pointed out is this trend line um and we're still well above it right and we're also above the 200 day moving average Okay, so let's zoom in a little more now that we've got, you know, we've got some important lines on here. Yeah. And so we have this, we have this down day, unfortunately closed below the 21, um, 21 day moving average. Um, but we're still above this support level here. Um, we're above the little gap. Should actually probably draw that in because that might come into play. Right. Is this gap here. Okay, and see how that, you know, oops, I missed. Is that a magnet on? Yeah. Okay, now it won't turn back on. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. There we go. <laughs> there. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can see we got a gap like right below that resistance or that support. Um, so that's helpful too on this. Um, so I wouldn't be like super concerned, but if it does come down into the trend line, then you got to be concerned and then you got to watch out for this pivot. And right. see what happens there, because that's going to be important as well. Even though it's not at the bottom of the channel, you know, this has really kind of got to be your line in the sand on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. The long story is short, and you already mentioned it, right? Because I mean, you don't, you don't want to go long this now, right? You want to wait and see, right? Right, right. exactly. That's kind of what you need to do. This could repair itself in a day or two, or two, well, two days, really. Mm -hmm. It needs to. It needs to just stop going down. It may come up a little bit and then have another up day, get through this downtrend line here, and then get above that high. Yeah. Um, so, right now it's just kind of a no man's land. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's just like you said. It's kind of like the wait and see if the market will be the repair of the breach of itself, and then yeah. and see if everything follows. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. But no, so, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I just, I was like, I was, I was just blown away because I, I, I don't think I've seen, you know, like I've seen, you know, his for historical context purposes of, of on charts, you know, things moving and then eventually have rolled over. But to see something go this long, 
in recent, I think, and you know, it's it's still going. That's and that's pretty strong. Um, and so yeah, it was just caught my eye. <laughs> right, right. Um, cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, I remember last time. Um, last time we were here, uh, Schultz had to leave. We were we um, Schultz had to leave before we got to his tickers. So I don't want to make sure that happens again. Um, so I want to move over to a couple of the tickers that that Schultz has put in here, and he brings up some good points. And so we'll bring up these charts as well, really quick. Um, he mentions that um, everything closed red today except Nvidia and a AMD. Interesting for sure. Um, and yeah, they were pretty strong, and they were in the strongest sub subsector, or at least the, 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 the strongest subsector that I track uh, closely. Um, the problem with both of these, or and uh, especially Nvidia here, is this gravestone doji. Um, where you uh, you reach up right, and then you pull right back and and closes where it opened right, um, and and the open and close are basically the same down at the bottom of that candle, and this is a bearish candle here. Now again, you sort of similar to the you know the ABC we just looked at. We're still above trend line. We're still above all the moving averages. We're above this consolidation that it had just broken out of today. Um, and I think, you know, as I mentioned in the video, we've got uh, the previous video, we've got lots of support uh, or should have some support here between this consolidation, the high of this breakout candle and the trend line. So not so bad. Um, and uh, you mentioned the video or AMD as well. Let's look at that really quickly. And it's a very similar sort of story here. I think the um, I think the candle, the candle on AMD is a little better. Uh, it's not quite as bearish, but still kind of bearish, right? Um, and if we look at the uh, SMH, the semiconductors ETF, um, so that was the top of my list of um, of subsectors and and sectors. I've got about twenty of them that I, I rank by performance. And that's at the top. It outperformed the S&P 500 by 1% today. It was still red. It was down, um, you know, uh, about 0.6%. But it outperformed the S&P by quite a bit. So, uh, but unfortunately, this has made the same sort of uh, bearish candle, right? Reaches up, it's got that big selling wick. We call this a selling wick when uh, it's on top of the candle because it's reaching up and then found sellers, right? And they sold it and they sold it hard. Um, so a little bearish in there, but uh, still, I guess, you know, in the grand scheme of things, not as bearish as a lot of the candles that we see for today. Um, okay. So yeah, Shills also mentions a few overnight swing trades that he took. Uh, and wants to take a look at those charts. Oh, so these are options trades. Okay, so um, coin. So when you say overnight, did you take the? Are you taking these overnight tonight, or did you go into these last night, like yesterday? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did it right towards the end of the bell. Once I saw a market kind of going down. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it was for uh, this week's. Expiring. Yeah. Okay. All right. So coin. Yeah. So I mean, you basically have a failure, a failed breakout here, um, because yesterday it came up. It got to that point, right? It found this resistance area, and today, um, it opened right there, and it's just it couldn't go any further. And now you've got a big red candle sitting there. And, you know, we, we call this pattern tweezers where you've got, uh, you know, when you're in an uptrend and you have a green one and then you have a red one and they're about exactly the same size and they have, you know, the same high and the same low. Um, that's called tweezers. Sometimes you, the wicks will be a little longer on those. So it actually looks more like a tweezer. Um, but uh, and you can see, you know, even here is kind of a tweezer pattern. Right. And it's a reversal pattern. You can see here acted as a reversal pattern. Uh, and you had a nice up move after that. And here, I mean, this is potentially very bearish. 
Uh, and I would not be one surprise, one bit surprised, um, you know, because this is a resistance level right here. Um, and it's had this sort of bearish turnaround so far if this goes down further. Um, of course, you know that um, um, this stock in particular is so tied to and correlated to, um, to crypto. So you got to keep an eye on that as well. And, you know, I mean, why don't we... Let's, um, we look at Bitcoin, you know, I mean, this, this also all kind of started to fall apart. If we look at the intraday chart here, um, same deal with the cryptos all started to fall apart when, um, when the market did. Yeah. You know, right at two o'clock, it started coming down. Um, so that's, uh, it's Bitcoin, Ethereum. Ethereum's the one I'm more concerned with here. And yeah, that comes down. So, you know, where are these, where are these going in the short term? You can see that these have kind of hit a resistance level much sooner than Coin did. Um, but hanging in there, and Ethereum especially, has got a really nice strong support level here. Um, this goes way back into, it's been a long time since I updated my crypto charts. I mean, this goes back forever. I think this is probably probably one of the first lines i ever drew on this chart <laughs> yeah okay yeah i bet you i drew that line in somewhere around here anyway um but again this is a really important uh level for ethereum I'm not sure hey, Kevin, good question uh why you got this chart open i'm just trying to get an idea like how you what you got uh set up down there as far as your like indicators uh you got oh, like some, yeah it looks like you have bollinger bands and your normal smas is that pretty much yeah yeah so um just it's just like my other charts on e-signal so the pink one is a um is a 10 period uh or a 10 day uh simple moving average the blue one is a 21 day exponential moving average the green is a 50 day simple and the orange one is a 200 day simple and then there are bollinger bands here these okay. the light gray lines which you are you picked up on yourself and then Perfect. down in the um bottom here the, on the volume chart the blue line is a 21 day exponential moving average of volume and the yellow line is on balance volume. Um, I don't really want to go into that right now. Uh, I use that occasionally, um, not much. I should pu actually pull it off. I actually have pulled it off of the um, the charts that I um, I do for most of the ticker talks and everything, just so it, it makes things a little cleaner. And then at the very bottom is uh, RSI. Um, and I really like um, I really like this RSI indicator on um, on TradingView that I found um, because you can see that it puts in additional lines. Um, you can see the dotted line. Now, when you're when you're in a um, bullish regime regime in in a stock or in the market or whatever, you should never come below the forty, right? People people always use an RSI. People use like thirty and seventy. Uh, as you know, if it's below 30, it's oversold. If it's above 70, it's overbought. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, when you've been on a bullish regime, regime, you should get and hold above 70. Now, if you get above 80, then it's a little overbought. And the cool, so the cool thing about this uh, particular version of the indicator on TradingView is that it shows you, right? See how it shades it blue? when stock is staying above or in this case <laughs> this crypto the coin is staying above um 40 it shades mm -hmm. that blue uh and when it gets into a more bearish regime um or potentially getting into a bearish regime that color changes a bit because it's shading it blue and pink but then once you're below um 40 having been um bullish then it's just pink after that so it's kind of neat. Uh, I, I I like the way they've done that. Um, it's cool. really helpful. Helps visualize kind of what's going on. It helps you remind you that even though it's overbought, it's it doesn't mean it's going down. <laughs> because a good stock and a good uptrend 
is going to stay overbought for a long time. And that's why I hate that term <laughs> you know, in, in reference to RSI. Yeah. So that's, call. The, uh, that's the indicators I have on, uh, on this chart. Thanks, Kevin. All right. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, you can see RSI, the, R, the RSI down here. This is just kind of um, what I had to do actually to get the extra lines in at 40 and, uh, and um, 60 is actually put two RSI indicators on here and just hide the actual RSI line from the other one. Because eSignal will let me move the lines around and, and, and put them where I want, right? <laughs> But it, it won't let me put two sets of lines, um, you know, horizontal lines onto the one indicator. And it doesn't let me do the shading, unfortunately, either. I mean, I guess I could get somebody to code that for me, but uh, it's probably not worth it. Hey, Kevin, before you uh, continue, just quick curious, the RSI indicator in trading view, what was the name of it? Good question. Isn't it? Oh, weird. Ah, here, it should be in here. Or not. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Uh, Matlet, RSI, Andrew Cardwell. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and the other thing that this one does, that it actually doesn't do all that well. Um, it's not perfect, so be careful if you use it. See the orange line here? That's supposed to be our RSI divergence. Um, and it does kind of seem to be working in this case. In, in fact, it is. But I have seen plenty of examples where this automatic rsi divergence line that it draws in is just simply wrong gotcha. so, so be careful with that no i understood <laughs> thank you cool okay um all right where was i oh yeah we were looking at coins so okay um you've got the puts on that 73 put 73 down here yeah should be able to do 73 pretty easy oh it's only got two days to do that though yeah i'm, I'm hoping for a quick scalp yeah, yeah okay. first thing in the morning. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i do you have more than one by any chance yeah i bought two sweet yeah. because i think that what happens is um like like i said earlier i think we flush in the morning um but there, I think there's a chance for a, a bounce, and it, it could be a really good bounce to catch a lot of people off guard. So, um, you know, this is not investment advice, but one of the things you might want to consider and prepare for is to cover one of these on a flush in the morning uh, and then maybe hang on to one just in case the markets go a lot further. And, and you know, so I'm only suggesting the potential for getting out of one really quickly is because there's not much time in these. There's only two days, right? Okay, right. Okay, good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I always like to, I always buy, in fact, I won't enter, enter an options trade if I can't buy at least two, because I always want to take one off early. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, so often these things can quickly go to zero. So if you can take some profit out quickly, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're doing pretty good for yourself. Yeah. And then the second one, like you said, where we could set up like a, like a trailing stop, and then know your mental stop as part of your trade plan, right? You should know your exits or where you're planning to trim. Yeah. Uh, is kind of like a good best practice. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and especially with this one, especially with coin, because now you know how volatile a crypto market can be. You know, and even though this isn't a crypto, you know, crypto itself, this is a, a you know, very closely related to the crypto market and, and often correlated to it. Um, okay, Tesla. Uh, all right. So 
Yeah, I would be a little more concerned about this one. So how much is this down? Oh, down three and a quarter percent. Okay, that is a big move down. Um, so it pretty much did the same thing, I think. You know, that had trouble. Tesla had trouble all day, though. It just couldn't get any memento. It couldn't go anywhere, which is kind of like the market. I mean, the market was pretty sideways. Yeah, but uh, yesterday was nice. Yesterday we had good yeah. momentum. Yeah, yesterday yeah. was really, really strong. Nice, really nice trend day there. Um, you can see, look at it. I mean, it never... It never pierced the 21 period, and in this case, that's five minute five minute candles, right? So it never it, it never pierced the 21 period until here, but it only had one close below that. And even and, oh, and then back up here. But by then, you're getting into the end of the day, so that shouldn't surprise you, you know. And if you're riding this trend as a day trader, you're getting out by then anyway. But yeah, really nice trend. Um, but today, yeah, just chop fest. Until, you know, until after Powell when it just fell off a cliff. Um, but look at this bounce here. Um, and this is this is one of the reasons, you know, one of the things that scares me about buying puts on Tesla sometimes is that, um, you know, people see a deal. Um, people see this, um, you know, this uptrend or, or very sort of new uptrend, the breakout out of that range. Uh, it's sort of a nice trade. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, gap up out of that range and, and start to go. Um, and then the unfortunate turnaround today. I I have a feeling that Tesla's going to find support here at this 186 to 187. I, you know, at worst, I think that 178 maybe down here at the bottom of this uh, consolidation and where the 50 day moving average is right now. So where are you on that one? What do you think? 185? Oh, good. I mean, your, your strikes are nice and close. So even if it doesn't get there, if it just, even if it just cut falls down to 186, um, you're still going to have a little bit of money in there. So this is another one where I'd probably be fairly quick to take profit on one. Um, uh, you know, unless it's really, unless the whole market is really tanking in the morning and showing no signs of turning around, then of course you want to stay in as long as you can. Yeah. Uh, cool, Kevin. Thanks. Yeah, real quick, I was just going to ask you, um, what's your thoughts on uh, using the orb strategy? You know, I think you talked about it a little bit a while back. Oh, uh, open range breakout. breakout. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it can work. I think in very specific circumstances. So for instance, I mean, let's look at Tesla here from, from yesterday, right? Yeah. So you've got this consolidation. So you probably are watching for a breakout. Um, you know, and this gap up was a really nice breakout. Hmm. I, you know, I'm not sure how, uh, I would think actually Tesla is probably one of those stocks that if there is a gap up, it goes really nicely. Let's look at some of the other gap. Yeah, there's, well, that one, not so much, maybe, although it did go intraday. Um, tiny gap, big gap and go, um, big gap and do nothing, medium gap and go, medium gap and go. <clears throat> yeah, okay, it's got, it seems with Tesla, the bigger the gap, the less likely it is to go. Um, if it's a small to medium sized gap, then it tends to go. So, okay, you know, knowing that, then you're looking at this, you're going, all right, this is a medium gap. This is probably going to go. So then looking at the intraday chart, what would you do? Was there a, was there an opening range that you could play a breakout of? And yeah, there is like, there's a couple. So we're looking at five minute candles and we look at the first five minute candle. We had some nice volatility in that, right? So you could have. Just drawn, you know, across the um, the top of that first five minute candle. You could play a five minute opening range breakout, um, and then you would have entered right here, right? You would have taken a little heat in here, but maybe if you had entered right here, when you go up to here and you start pulling back, you might have taken some of your position off here to make it easier for you to handle this heat here. So that's if you played a, you know, the opening five minutes. If you played the opening 15 minutes, then you're looking at the top of this candle, uh, which means you're kind of going in on the very next candle. And if you're playing the opening hour range, 
then that would be the top of this candle. And you're in here on this big green candle. Okay. And it's a big green candle because people are playing that opening opening range breakout, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, this thanks, Kevin. Yes, with this, and then like you said, um, I'm exploring where you can add a little bit more uh strategy to the orb. And then yeah. within trading view, they've got this back testing feature, right? right? Where which is pretty pretty cool where you can see the percentage of how that's kind of playing out. Right. Um, so yeah, this is cool stuff. Okay. That's, that's cool. And if well if and then if you could code your back test to look at the size of the gap. Let's say it's gap. Let's say you've got opening range breakout on a gap. Um Chris Moody ORB. Okay. Well let's let's throw it on here and see what that looks like. Uh oh sorry, no, we're not on trade. I'll do that later. Um Yeah, I'm gonna tell you it's on trade duty, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Let's say you you know you you're you're developing an opening range breakout system and and part of that I think should be because there's two different kinds right it, it, there's a gap kind so if it gaps up how is it done given the size of the gap and I think it'd be really handy to know that so that um, like I looked you know like I was doing looking back at the chart and sort of determined that well if the gap's really big maybe maybe it doesn't do so well afterwards. Um, and it'd be really cool to be able to back test that and find out for sure. Yeah. Right. So that was Tesla. Um, okay. Let's go back. Uh, how, how are things going in, in, in your, on your side, Kevin, with, uh, have you been trading, uh, who would even, I know you, sh you shared some pretty cool upcoming setups, but uh, they got invalidated. You know, we got to wait a little bit. You should post it. Yeah, a little, yeah, I mean, some some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, I mean, AMD worked great. Uh, but that one, one was from a little while ago. What did I, what have I taken recently? Um, they're in a different workspace. Uh, you know what, actually here, if you guys can, don't mind waiting for a sec, and if you're watching the recording, maybe skip ahead for a minute. I'm just going to go back to my uh, main workspace. So that we can take a look at a uh, couple of ones, a couple of ones that I didn't sort of make public, um, because, um, you know, I was less convinced about them, but still willing to take the risk myself, right? Because I know that, you know, my, my stops are going to be tight on them um, and I'm going to trade them a little smaller. But I don't, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's like it's uh, it feels a little sketchy sharing some of these ideas, um, especially the ones that I have lower confidence in. Because I don't know how people are going to trade them. And, I, you know, and I don't want to see people lose money, right? I'm fine with losing my own money. Um, I know what my win rate is and I know that um, if I, you know, if I keep taking these trades that I'm going to have a lot of small losses. I'm going to have uh, a lot of small wins and I'm going to have a few really big wins. And, and I'm, I'm fine with that. That, that works for me, but that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Um, so, all right, let's bring this in here. Whoops. Oh, no, that's right. No. Uh -oh. Signal getting buggy. There we go. Um, so this is Octa. This is one of the ones I was going to recommend today um, till it fell apart because I really like the way it was tightening up in here. I like the way this is kind of, I mean, it hasn't had a huge move up here. It's been a little choppy, um, but you had that earnings gap. You had a pullback. It hit the 21 day moving average. It came back up and then you get this tight consolidation. And earlier today, that consolidation was really tight. And unfortunately, it fell kind of fell at the bottom of the consolidation. Um, you know, the consolidation was like, well, I guess it's actually, it's still, it's right at the bottom of the consolidation right now. But I liked that you have a level up here 
it's kind of an early entry on this breakout, essentially, right? Because you can play it on the breakout of here. And you probably get some momentum coming up into here, and then you really get some momentum. Um, uh, so that was one of them. But I don't like it anymore. I, I until we the market tells us what's going on here. Okay, what else was I watching? Uh, this one. <clears throat> Just some like no name, whatever. Um, I played the Blake breakout right here. Uh, didn't play it on this big green day, but played it the next day. And the reason that I didn't, um, the reason I didn't make this one public is because it was this big green candle here, right? Which sort of reduces the odds of this actually working. Um, you know, I don't like them when they run up quickly into a level. Um, you know, I, I prefer that they go up into a level and then, you know, pause and then go. Uh, but this one's working and uh, my stop is just above break even now. Um, so if this uh, if this does continue to roll over, like it kind of looks like it's going to, um, I'll, you know, I'll take a tiny little profit out of that one. Oh, this one I missed. I couldn't I couldn't get filled and I didn't want to chase it. And I really should have. Um, so this one, I liked this little candle right here. Uh, so you've got that big day and then you had a really tight little, you know, candle almost inside day. Right. Uh, and then, uh, I, I was going to play it above the high of that and it went up uh, my order didn't get filled and then it started pulling back and I'm like, how much is it going to pull back? And then it just sort of got choppy intraday and I didn't like it. But then the next day it gapped up and it's had two really nice days. And even today, it was kind of one of the stronger stocks, right? This is up 4% today, even after that pullback. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little annoyed about missing that one. Um, what else? Oh, this one got stopped out of. Um, with a profit, um, I decided to, um, so I played the breakout here, right? Pretty obvious where I would play that breakout, right? Um, uh, everything was going great. Then, this, you know, today uh, it goes up and it started coming back. And once we got below the close of yesterday, I'm like, ah, this isn't working. And I bailed. Um, so I bailed up in here. I should actually get rid of this alert. I don't need that there anymore. Uh, so, yeah, there's a few examples of things that trades that I've entered over the last couple of days. Um, there's another one that I was going to put on the list for today. Oh, SE. <clears throat> yeah, if you guys want to watch this for yourselves, um, you can see that all of these have a very similar pattern, right? Where you've got this nice strong move up. You get this dip back down to a moving average. In this case, it's the 10 day moving average. And then you start moving back up again. And um, I actually thought this might go today. If it went today, I wouldn't have wanted it. Um, but I thought that, uh, you know, because we had a little bit of a pullback and it looked like, okay, maybe this isn't going to go today. This is pretty cool. And then it just fell apart, of course, at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, you're going to want to be in. Whoops. You're probably now you got to you got to wait for above there. Um, so ideally, what this what happens here is this comes up, maybe it spends two tight little days right under here, and then goes would be awesome. Um, but even if we just get or or if we had an inside day in here, if we had a tiny little candle um, that looked like. Something like that. If we had a little candle that looked like that in there, I would probably buy, like, you know, the day after tomorrow, um, buy a breakout above that little candle. And then, you know, with super tight stops, though. And if there's any kind of, like, any kind of looks like crap intraday, I would just bail on it. So, Kevin, how about if it if it breaks and then retest? Is it is it better to wait then, too? Is that is that a good way to... I don't, yeah, I don't like that play. Um, I just... Okay. 
I feel, I feel that doing that play, you just missed so many good opportunities. Oh, yeah. Because to me, if it's really good, it shouldn't retest. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it yeah. like, or if it does retest, it's it's a ways off in the distance. Like, for instance, um, I mean, I guess he could look at, I mean, look at this little consolidation. I wouldn't have played this anyway, but you can see some people do play this. Um, you know, to me, this is you know almost catching a falling knife. But you've got this three-day consolidation uh, pattern here. So the people who buy this right here, right, are are in pretty good shape. Now, I guess it did actually retest, and you could have bought this. But where do you buy it? Do you buy it? So if you bought, if you initially bought on a breakout of that, and you come back, so what is a retest? Is the next day a retest? It never, it never touched there, right? Um, it, it never touched the actual breakout point, and it didn't touch the actual breakout point here. Although you could look back to these candles and go, okay, if it touches there, then maybe I'll buy. So if you're really aggressive, then you buy here. Um, or do you wait? Do you want to wait until it gets above here? Um, I think there's just too many kind of like, there's too many ways to miss the trade if you're if you're waiting for a retest. So let's say you bought so instead of buying that one, you bought this one, which is, I think, more of a kind of more of a sure thing. <laughs> if you bought the breakout from that, um, then where is the retest? It never really comes, right? Until you're out of the trade, because you're buying here and it's going up, and maybe you're you're probably peeling some off in here. Um, comes down to here. Well, it doesn't close for me. It's like a close below the ten-day moving average is is time to get out on a swing trade like this. Um, so that would mean that I was out here. Uh, so I would have yeah, missed, yeah. you know, have missed yeah, a little bit. learning is that the <clears throat> you can build more conviction in the play by learning the candle structure. Like you pointed that inside day. If you get an inside day candle after that red one, then that's something more you could have a better bias. You know, it could break out a little bit above that 80-ish area where you got lined out there um yes or, are you talking about this candle right here or sorry yeah no the um like down here the one that you drew the the last candle that small line blue all the way to the far right like uh oh, there, yeah, 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 okay yeah um yes definitely so i mean this here um you've got a reversal candle right here that's almost a hammer um the volume isn't very good on it but um, yeah, so then the next day you've got this red candle. So what this does for you, it really improves your risk reward. Because if you enter above the high of that candle, right, where are you going to put your stop? Well, I would say at worst, you're proven wrong if you get below the low of that candle. So your risk on this um, is, what are we looking at? 61.28 is around your entry. And your stop would be 59. 71 so about a buck and a half right a buck and a half in a stock that has an atr of four dollars that's pretty good so that's really good risk reward on that um or you know it, uh, the risk is really well defined i mean the re reward on that is going to be you know how far do you think it can go on its next move and this one did make a nice move after that now as far as uh those targets trim targets do you look at that uh the fib retracement or fib level targets do you like to base no. it off of is it yeah. no no i watch i watch price action okay okay i watch for slowing momentum okay so you know on on, on this move here right you, you come into here well obviously there was slowing momentum here you know because i mean you had you know you had a couple of down days but um, it's still new enough in this trade that I, I'm not going to worry about it. My stop is going to still be way down here, just about break even um, at this point, because they haven't been in the trade that long. Uh, and then the next time it goes up and starts to pull back, probably on this day, uh, I would, you know, maybe on this day when we tag the 200 moving at 200 day moving average and pull back, I might have sold some there um, as the selling came in. Uh, because often you will get a pullback after that. If it failed to get through on the first try, it's going to pull back a bit and, you know, maybe get through later, right? Um, so just watching price action and, and stuff is what I'm going to do. I don't, 
I'm not a fan of fib extensions. I do occasionally use Fibonacci's, but not the extensions. Um, okay, so th so those are not really the best levels of support and resistance. You think those, uh, you know, well, they work. They work sometimes, and they don't others, right? So I'm not going to get out of a trade just because it hits a fib level. I'm going to see how the price action is around that level. So if I'm going to wait for the price action, then I don't need to have the fib. I'm just watching the price action. All right. Yeah. Right. So there may be some, there, you know, there may be some fib extension right there, um, you know, and there may be a fib, you know, there may be a, a Fibonacci retracement here that, that suggested that this might bounce here. Um, but I still wouldn't, I still wouldn't buy just because it bounced off a Fibonacci retracement. Okay. Look at that. It nailed it perfectly on the 618. Um, <laughs> you can do that, right? And there are, obviously there are traders who do that. Um, and somebody in this stock bought it right there. It also happens to be like a 5804. So it's an even number. So that's also a place, um, you know, 58 kind of even is, is a spot where there's a good chance that it's going to bounce uh, on a pullback. Um, and you can see there's also a bit of a volume node uh, or, or volume shelf right there as well. Uh, so. Yeah, there are things that line up here. My my concern with people, and you should experiment with this stuff. Don't just because I say I don't use it, um, that doesn't mean anything. You should experiment with this stuff for yourself and see if it works or not, and works for you. Um, but what the, one of the problems I think you know you end up with sometimes is you start experimenting with, with a bunch of stuff, and you get all this stuff cluttering up your chart, and then you can't see price anymore. And you can't see price action anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to ask you, like, why you're looking at price action? Are you constantly throughout the day drawing, um, you know, looking, drawing like trend lines and things like that? Or are you just, you know, you're just labeling your support and resistance levels, your pivots, and that type of thing? You know, it, yeah. Sometimes, um, I don't generally draw a lot of. Um, trend lines on my charts uh, i can visualize the trend line right i can i can see it kind of in my head without putting it on the chart um same goes uh, uh same goes for a lot of support resistance lines um so i you know but when i was newer i i drew all those lines and i so strongly suggest that anybody who is newer <laughs> draws all those lines um, because it is so much harder for you to visualize those um so yes uh, lines like that, support resistance lines and trend lines, I think you should draw as many of those on your chart as you can. Um, what I am a little against is having too many indicators on the chart. But, you know, trend lines aren't indicators. Um, you know, they're lines that are, they're, they're a visual clue to, to yourself, right? They're a reminder to yourself that there's a trend there. Um, and, and at some point in time, you will also get to the point where you just look at the chart and you see the trend line without the trend line being there. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. You know, like the trend line, like if you drew a trend line from here, you know, touching on here, um, or even just, you know, here, I, I could tell you without even drawing it that that trend line is not going to touch this. But if I drew a trend line through this, it's going to come up and it's going to be probably the top of this here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of this little channel here. I mean, let's just for fun, let's just do that and see. I could be really embarrassed here if I'm wrong, but um, what was the one I was? Oh, it almost actually touches that. Okay, yeah, all right. I was kind of wrong on that. So I visualized that incorrectly. So there you go. Maybe I should be drawing those trend lines. <laughs> what is, I, you know, the trend line is just to tell you, hey, it's in an uptrend. Um, and I can see that it's in an uptrend. Um, without a trend line, right? Yeah, because of the higher higher lows and that type of yeah. thing. Right? Yeah, we've got a series of, of higher lows and and higher highs here. Um, and, you know, the other thing you can see, and, and one of the things that, you know, I have more trouble seeing all the time, and I might draw on the chart if I was, um, you know, really interested in this or interested in this for a, you know, a really long play, um, I might draw the wedge on here. 
Um, so, you know, you, you draw a line like this, and then you come over here and you draw that on there. I don't like that from there. I like that from here. There we go. That's better. Let's tweak that down a little bit. And now, see, now the wedge on here is really clear, right? But it took me a while to see that. So that is something that I might leave on the chart, um, you know, to uh, remind myself that, hey, there's that wedge there. And wedges in this context are generally bearish. So if we look at a weekly chart on this, see how that wedge looks on the weekly. And yeah, it, you know, so in this context, this wedge is basically a continuation pattern. It's a, uh, you know, it's almost a bear flag. Um, you know, we've come down, we consolidated a little bit, came down even farther. Now we've got this wedge here and then a wedge in this context, you expect to break out to the downside. So that's not especially bullish. But this isn't the time frame I'm trading in here. Let me get rid of the uh, Fibonacci just to clean this up a bit. And get rid of that. There we go. All right. So, you know, this is this is definitely a weekly time frame kind of pattern. But that's not the time frame I would be trading with this breakout trade. Uh, with the breakout trade, I'm trading on, on the daily chart, right? And really, I, I mean, almost on an intraday intraday chart, uh, you know, a 65 minute chart, um, you know, that pattern probably looks really nice. Um, yeah, it does. I mean, you know, you know, nice little up channel here. It's just the series. What what really what I really like about this, you can see it's a lot clearer now. I mean, you can see this on the daily chart too. Um, but it's this triangle, right? You've got this series of higher lows, um, then coming in, and then you've got the flat top here. Um, that's that's really strong. That's really nice, and that suggests that when it does break out, it's going to be an explosive move. Um, it's similar to what it did here. Um, where it gapped up. It's not quite as clean there, but you can see the series of, of um, higher lows and a bit of a flat top there. Um, but again, the, the, the top that is nowhere near as clean as it is here. So does that, uh, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Very, yes. Thank you again very much, Kevin. Yeah, great, Thank great session welcome. today. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, my boy, my throat's getting a little sore, so I think that uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day here. Unless it was, was there anything else you wanted to look at, um, Marvin? Nope, we might have lost Marvin. No, nope, I'm here. Sorry, uh, couldn't get to the mute button quick enough. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, I, I have to remember that there's always a little bit of a delay too. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I don't have anything else to look at. This has been great. Cool. All right, let's move over to here. Let's look at, oh, what do we got? Next Wednesday, another ticker talk. Uh, last one of the month. So that's on Wednesday. And um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming out. Um, thank anybody who made it this far if they're watching the recording. And um, we will see you all again. Uh, well, I'll see you guys in the Discord and anybody who's watching the recording or whatever. I'll uh, see you all again next week. Have a good night, guys.